Good morning guys, hope everyone's doing well. I am out with my Sony ZV-1 on a pretty nice Sunday. A little warm, but I wanted to go and do a quick tutorial on how to use these guys like the ZV-1 and the RX100 Mark 7. A lot of the Sony cameras, but really any camera, point and shoot wise, has the same basic functionality on how to use the macro side of these cameras. And I'm a big nature guy, so I like seeing things close up and insects and butterflies and flowers especially. But there's different ways to shoot macro with these guys. So you really want to be conscious of your minimum focus distance, which the ZV-1 has, I believe, two inches. You want to be really familiar if you're using the autofocus feature, which one to be using, probably like a little point. So you want like a flexible point, and it's really important to know that you have the right point, you have it in the right area, you have the right size, say you want, there's a small, medium, and large, the small will be great if you're shooting a little piece of a, like a hibiscus or something in that little stem. But anyway, I'll go into it a little bit more and I'm gonna set up, I got my iPhone 11 Pro in my back pocket with a Rode Smart Lab mic that I'm gonna use for audio and I'm gonna try to walk you through some of the settings and some of the things to look out for when you are shooting macro. I'm gonna look for a Monarch there's a lot of milkweed over here in this prairie. Really pretty place, actually. I'm gonna try to locate, I'll show you, turn the camera around. So right here, milkweed, we got plenty of it here. One of the things you wanna look for, when you're looking for milkweed and caterpillars, first you gotta find the plant, but then you wanna see, too, if there's not an obvious caterpillar hanging out, you wanna see that some of the leaves actually have been eaten. So let's see if we can find something. And that's kind of how you hone in on looking for your subject. In nature, you move slowly. So if you start walking fast in nature, you really miss a lot. You need to be mindful when you're walking in nature. Kind of think about a sloth. I spent time in Costa Rica quite a bit, and sloths are really amazing creatures like that. You really have to be slowing down. And Costa Rica, for example, moves at a really intensely slow pace, which is awesome. I love that personally. So let me see, not really quickly, let me see slowly. Here's more milkweed. If we look closely, we can see a ladybug in there. So if we take the time to slow down, we see all kinds of little creatures. So we got a ladybug in that one. The leaves are intact. Now if I flip this around, I don't necessarily have to, but then I gotta flip the LCD around. I'm gonna walk until we get a little bit more milkweed. And these little tutorials and videos, I'm just doing kind of like we would do in Hawaii. We say talk story. We just kind of talk and hang out and learn along the way and share stories and share info and share tips and tricks like I'm gonna do here with you on shooting macro with these little point and shoot cameras. Right now I'm using the ZV-1. That's gonna be the camera I'm gonna use. And I'll show you how to get some kind of cool macro shots and what to look for and what focal length to be using and what's the advantages of both. So hold on one moment and we're gonna look for some more milkweed. I'm gonna carefully step over here. No, oop, there's a little damselfly. We got a little damselfly cruising around. Oop, see him there, he landed. And a lot of times with damselflies, they land in the same spot, so if you just remain patient and chill, they'll actually land right in the same exact little zone that they keep on landing on. So now, if you see, we see some that has been eaten and chewed by what I'm sure is a monarch caterpillar. I don't know. And a lot of times you gotta look under the leaves, but that's kind of what you look for when you're looking for nature. So just like anything, if you know your subject matter, you'll have better success. So whether it's your camera, like the ZV-1, or nature, like whatever you're trying to shoot. So caterpillars, you want to know their behavior. Uh, there's little, I don't know if it's a ladybug or beetle, but little guys cruising around over there. So I'm going to go and walk around, and I won't necessarily take you through the entire thing, because it sometimes takes a while. So I'll take note of how this camera's performing, if it goes out or overheats in the process. Okay, so see this little Sony remote? Right now, 
if you're shooting and you're not needing to use any of these controls like the defocus custom button or whatever you set it to go ahead and throw this one from here to there in the lock so now if you're shooting and you hit the movie button the zoom button anything you're not going to accidentally cause something to stop or uh, change what you're doing so throw this thing in the lock mode i believe it conserves the battery too if you're not using the camera and the grip so just be conscious of this little guy little tip and trick for this little grip a little tip and trick for the grip all right guys been kind of cruising nature it took a while to actually go through all the milkweed and find a beautiful monarch but you know, I'm not going to let you down. So, with that being said, do you want to see a monarch caterpillar? That's going to be our subject for this macro video because I figure they're nice and slow. They cruise. They have little areas that you'd want to focus on. Sometimes you focus on their butt accidentally because <laughs> you, you don't know where their head is, so pay attention. I've done that before. But... Just so you're aware too, again, I'm on the shooting mode right below HFR. I'm in program mode in that actual mode. So there's like sub menu. So you got again, the program, aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual. I was using manual earlier. I got the skin beauty softening effect thing, the low. I thought medium looked kind of weird. I have it shooting 4K and it's zeroed out exposure compensation in this mode. So maybe a teeny bit bright, but I'm just going to roll with it and see what happens. And I have my mic levels set, so you guys are aware, to 31. 31, I think, is maxed out for the most part, but it seems to work really well. There's no clipping, and I had no issue in post working with the audio levels, and it seemed like it just was perfect. So there's that. So let's go and cruise. I got a few things down here. I brought my mind shift little thing with four extra batteries, because you will need batteries. Uh, I got a little piece of plastic just in case to put my care down. Sometimes it's nice if you have to kneel or whatever or just throw stuff down. There's a lot of little insects and they get all over everything. Got little slippers. Let's go cruise over here. Throw this stuff down and let's get our first glimpse. Do you see him? Do you see the caterpillar? Hmm. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, Mo. Okay, so again, right now, I'm just giving you a little real life example. Where is this guy? Dude. It's hard to see the monitor. It's a bright sunny day, and I'm just being honest with you, it's very difficult to see the LCD in the sun like it is now. So I can't even see, well, you can't either, but I'm going to expose it properly first. But I just want to let you know that when you're shooting 4K, you can't put it in sunny monitor mode or sunny brightness or sunny weather, I guess it's actually the technical term. So you can't put it in the sunny weather mode. So there is that. And then if you do, if you're shooting 1080, it's going to overheat pretty rapidly and then you won't be able to shoot at all. So, oh. so really quickly, I was just talking and it just shut down my ZV-1 saying the internal temperature was too high so this is again not me making it up trying to shoot a video and this thing constantly shutting off on me so you see it just powered off on me still have good battery but the actual internal temp is too high so now what do i do i have full sun basically everywhere i go i'll probably just toss it underneath some shade for a second and there's that but totally break you know breaks the flow of your video and it probably have been out what shooting 15 20 minutes walking around with it the camera's been on probably the zv1 i mean for a total of five minutes i bet and sunny monitor or sunny weather mode whatever wasn't on so it's just at a normal brightness level so pretty frustrating and that really is a deal breaker i mean I love this little guy, but if this thing constantly shuts off on me, it really does constantly interrupt what you're doing, and it sucks. I really don't like that at all. So I'm gonna rock with the RX100 Mark VII when it comes in. I'm gonna do a comparison with the sound with the RX100 Mark VII with the little 
mic I have, a little cheap 20 something dollar one, that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna use my Video Mic Pro Plus on it, my Rode. And I got a little rig from like Ulanzi or something. So I'm gonna see how all the different audio levels sound between the ZV-1, the RX100 internal built-in, the one with the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, and also the little teeny $20, $25 one I got off of Amazon that actually is pretty decent. But again, I wanted to just let you know what when, you know, what happened and while I was shooting, basically, I'm gonna show you the reveal of the Monarch Caterpillar. It just powered down because it was overheating. So that is essentially it. I'm gonna wait a few minutes and then I'm gonna try to continue on. But again, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to do this tutorial really easily because of it overheating and being so hot. So, I mean, it's 80, probably five right now. It's not that crazy hot of a day. It is full sun, but fuck us. That's what you have to kind of work around the entire time. <laughs> okay, so while this thing's cooling down under here, so you see ZV-1 is basically rendered useless dead. So this thing needs to cool down like a little baby. So go to sleep, rest, get some cool air. I'm gonna show you with my iPhone 11 Pro, this beautiful Monarch Caterpillar. And probably will have no issue focusing. Sound will probably be pretty decent. I'm gonna kind of lift the leaf to show you. He won't mind. Ooh, hello. So that's what I was about to show you and reveal. And there's his head right there. And he's just kind of chilling out. But again, you know, Sony ZV-1, right about to show you the really cool hero shot for the subject for this whole entire video and it literally shuts off on me from overheating. So reality shoot and test run and that's what's happening basically every time I've taken this thing out. So beautiful day here in the suburbs of Chicago. We got some rollerbladers cruising by. What's up guys? How are you? Again, with the iPhone 11 Pro, I don't need to miss a shot. I can go ahead and see little guy digging over here. I can zoom in a little bit. What I should start doing is just doing a bunch of tutorials on how to use and rock out your iPhone 11 or your iPhones in general, because I do know a lot about these guys. So again, I'm gonna let it cool down. I'm gonna continue on with the macro tutorial with the little point and shoot ZV-1, which will apply to other Sony point and shoots and other point and shoots as well, like Canon G series or whatever it is you're shooting. They have similar functionality, but they just do things a little differently. You just wanna be concerned with the focal point, you know, which one, where it's at, and you wanna be concerned with if you're zooming in all the way and how close you can focus with that and then how close you can focus when you're zoomed all the way out, things like that. Just play around with it and experiment, but know to be conscious of a few different moves that will really help you out. Okay guys, so I'm using the ZV-1 again. About 10 minutes passed, and it's funny because you know what happened now? Now I see the battery's about to die. So first the actual camera shuts down from overheating and then once it gets done overheating, essentially the battery is about to die now too. So what I would suggest if this happens to you, just throw on a fresh battery so you don't have more frustration. But it is on sunny weather brightness mode now. I'm in program auto. I'm using a small flexible point and I'm going to go ahead and see. I don't want to bother this guy, but I do want to show you. So as you see, here is the Caterpillar. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust the exposure compensation and zero it out. It was actually a little dark before. It was minus one stop. So it's almost comical at this point. Right when I said that, literally, the battery was exhausted and it shut down again. So like I was saying, within, what, 10 minutes of having to shoot the hero shot, it shut off on me from internal temp being too high, and then the battery was dead. So just full of frustration honestly with this guy i mean I, I there's no way i'm gonna keep this because it just it's far too frustrating to use i mean i'm missing shots every single time i go out with it but 
let's try to find a subject. And again, going to continue on to, <laughs> if I can, this little camera is really trying to get the best of me with the battery and with the, the overheating issue. So I'm going to see if I can try to find maybe a little shady zone. It may not be a monarch because I don't want to disturb this one because he's underneath the leaf and I don't want to, I don't have like props and stuff or someone to help out. So I don't have an assistant or anyone to hold the leaf for me. But regardless, I just want to let you know, this is real life using the ZV-1, overheating a lot and batteries really suck. But I know we're familiar with that one, but I think for whatever reason, between the frustration of this thing overheating constantly and then the battery issue makes it not fun. So now what I'm gonna do is hit the function button and I'm gonna to go to the focus area mode right next to AFC. I'm gonna depress the center button I'm going to depress it again, and now I have the small little flexible point, and if I roll the dial, it will go from large, medium, small. So I have it on small, and then I basically have it right to where his head is, right all the way to the left. So as you see, I'm zoomed all the way um, out. So I'm zoomed all the way out, not all the way in. Again, this camera has two inch minimum focus. So this is what I'm achieving with this. The little small flexible point is ensuring it should at least, that it's focused right on his head, what were the antenna are. And again, I'm probably three, four inches away. Let me see if I can get a little closer. And let's see how this footage looks. I don't want to really maybe use this guy completely because he's underneath the leaf. And I want him to chill and not really disrupt nature for sake of a video. He's fine right now though. Okay, so I'm sitting down and I'm going to go ahead and just use some of these little purple flowers that you can see right here as my subject. Because it's low. I have a low kind of Joby tripod with me. So I'm sitting down, I'm locking the exposure of my iPhone 11 Pro by depressing my face. It's going to be a little dark, I know, but I want to have some of the detail of the clouds. So in any case, I'm sitting with the ZV-1 after it overheated and shut down right as I was about to reveal the Monarch Caterpillar. And then when I finally got the thing after about 10 minutes to cool down, it gave me a battery warning and then the battery shut down on me. So now what I have to do is detach the grip in order to change the battery. So you got to unscrew this guy by rolling the wheel. Then it will give you access to the battery compartment. You flip this little lever, and then you hit this little blue tab. And then that will pop out little NPBX1 batteries, which kind of suck, but whatever. It is what it is. And that's a Sony one, mind you. you got little case that I showed you the other day. Three more batteries. I'm going to grab one, boom, should be 100% charge. I'm going to put the contacts, these three little contacts, throw it into the battery, I mean, throw it into the camera, and now I have to go ahead and screw this thing back on. So you see, boom, 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 boom. So that's what you need to do every time you change a battery. Not that it's that huge of a deal, but I just want people to be aware that's what happens. You don't change it while the grip's on. Give me one moment and we're going to turn around to the camera. Okay, so I'm in some shade. I'm going to take the grip off because it's just going to be a little bit cumbersome for shooting still pictures with the ZV-1. And I'm just going to focus on this little flower right here for the sake of the tutorial. It's too hard to find a monarch that's in the shade in the zone and not under a leaf or something. So we're gonna work on this little purple flower. I'm gonna detach this little guy. Boom, put that aside, make sure it's on lock to conserve battery. I believe it does, but regardless, keep it on lock. I'm gonna open this guy up. I'm gonna go like that. And I'm gonna see, let me see what brightness this is on. So this is on sunny weather, and this is what I'm talking about the whole time. I have it on sunny weather. It should be fine. 
but this may be good enough actually for the video's sake. So let me try to get this where I need to be. I'm gonna rotate this thing down a little bit. Okay, right a little bit lower. Okay, that works, right? So one of the things that you're gonna to wanna to be conscious of and familiar with is the function button this little center dial right here and the little control ring. So while I'm here, actually, I could take this off. I'm gonna take this little hot shoe off. Do, 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 or the little dead cat. <laughs> so now you can see clearly what the mic looks like, on off button, mode button, the video record button and your shutter button. And then you have this custom button, which is used for like the defocus or the product showcase. But again, what I'm gonna show you for the macro side of things, if I hit the function button, these are basically what's in the menu. So I have my shooting drive modes. I'm gonna keep it on single shot, but you can go ahead and keep it at, you know, a high burst rate. And from here, you can go to low, to medium, and then you have your self timer and different brackets and blah, blah, blah. But for now, just stay on single. And then from there, you can depress the function button again. And then you have your focus modes. So you have autofocus A, which essentially will be for still moving objects and continuous objects. So if you're shooting something with a little movement, say this flower, it's for the most part pretty still, so you could probably get away with AFS, but I would keep it in probably AFA just because I can, or throw it into manual focus if you really want to get more precision. But these are essentially your focus modes. You got manual focus, DMF, which is like a digital manual focus, AFC, AFA, and AFS. So I'll keep it at AFA for now. And then I'm going to get the function button again. And then I want to see the focus area. So you have wide, which I'm not going to want to do for something this small. You have zone, which I still won't want to do for something this small, like a flower. You have center, which I don't want to do because I'm not going to necessarily compose this guy dead in the center. And then I have flexible spots and I have medium, large, and small. So I can toggle between these while I'm actually shooting and composing. And then from here, I got expand flexible spot, which I don't mess with. So over here, doo -doo -doo, I'm gonna just move. And as you see, I can take this dial while it's still showing those arrows and scrub it to the right or left. And it will go from small, large, medium. And then if I wanna lock on it, I depress it and I set it essentially. Now, if I wanna go back and get it to where I can move it around again and change the large, medium, small, I depress the center button again, and now I can go and move it. So say I wanna move it right to the flower. It's kinda of hard to do while I'm looking through a monitor to another monitor. But as you see, that green is gonna tell me that it's focusing. Now, mind you, look, I'm essentially three to four inches, probably four inches away from the tip of the lens, the camera. And I'm gonna continue moving. Here, let me see, a little closer. And I could still get right there, it went red. So little half inch movement, I'm just keep on finessing it. So now I'm probably a little less than two inches. I'm gonna go back a teeny bit. And that's that. So if you see, that's the shot, and you can see how focused it is. It seems like everyone's coming around here right now, now that I'm shooting and I find a little shady zone. But regardless, as you see, and then you can hit this button, the preview button, the little play button down here, depress that, and then use this, and use the telephoto side to zoom in and see if it's sharp or not and you can kind of scrub around the photo with this wheel. So that thing's tack sharp. I'll put a picture up right now to show you. 
but super tech sharp, really beautiful. It was shot at 50th of a second F3.2 at ISO 125. So pretty ideal as far as the settings are concerned. And we're gonna see how this sounds too with people walking by. See how the mic sounds. Hopefully there aren't more people walking by. That's why I come out here to be away from people. But regardless, as you see, I'll show you the shot and super beautiful. But you can now also try to zoom all the way in. So you can take this and zoom all the way in. And now I'm way too close. But if I physically move further back, I could see that it's focusing. If you see the little green point, but it's going to give you a different type of macro. So it's going to get close to the subject but just not the type of macro that I want. But play around, you know what I mean? As I said, zoom all the way in with your camera, zoom all the way out, see how close you can get with each and see what kind of results you get with each. I mean, essentially, sometimes if it's like a huge group of flowers or something, you may want to be further back and zoom all the way in and get that kind of cool compression with a 70 millimeter focal length. So I'll show you the difference. Here, I'm gonna just go low really quick and I'll show you the picture of how this one looks. But that looks, so okay, this one's in focus, zoom it all the way out. And you see it's really beautiful still too. And that's the shot. But to me, that's far more showcasing the flower properly. This one's a little blurred, but this one, for example, it's really beautiful. And it's an example of macro photography and focusing on something very small like this little guy and just getting a beautiful, you know, out of focus, shallow depth of field with it. And again, see how there's a little movement right now? So with that little movement, you can keep this thing, be conscious of your focus. You want to make sure you are on an AFA or an AFC. If you're on the single shot mode, essentially it's saying this thing should be still. It shouldn't be moving at all. So if I, you know, if you see the movement right now with this guy, it's moving slightly, not a lot of wind, but it's definitely got some movement to it. So when you're shooting macro with something like the ZV-1 or an RX-100 Mark VII and taking still pictures, you wanna be focusing on certain things such as zooming all the way in and seeing how close you can get, say at 70 millimeters, and then zooming all the way out by going wide and seeing what you can get at 24 millimeters. Knowing what your minimum focus distance is will help. So this, as I said a bunch of times, is two inches from your subject. So you know you can get pretty darn close two inches away from something like this. And another thing you wanna be paying attention to is your drive mode. I would probably stay in single shot because you wanna just get one shot and then redo. You don't necessarily wanna be using a burst mode and paying attention to your focus mode. So if it's a moving subject, keep it at AFA or AFC. And if it's not moving at all, keep it at AFS. But play around and know that the AFA and AFC is gonna be anything with some movement and AFS ideally is no movement. And again, play around, see, take the shot in all different modes and see which one comes out sharpest. And then another thing is key is the focus area. So, for something like a flower, I wouldn't want to keep it on wide because you're wanting to determine where you want the actual focus. So don't keep it on wide. You can play around with zone if you like. Center, most likely you wouldn't want because that's going to mean whatever you're composing is going to be directly in the center of the frame. So flexible point will give you the most versatility. So you can go and determine whether or not you want it from small, medium, or large. And then you can move this guy all around the sensor plane and determine exactly where you want the focus to be. So if I want it to be, you know, on a certain little piece of the leaf, like right, right there, I can fly it around, roll the dial to make it smaller, and then press the center button and it will lock it in. And then you'll see it's green and take a shot. If you zoom in on this area, you'll see that little zone of the leaf will be super sharp. And that was all the way to the left of the frame, down over, down over there. So 
this is hard to do but again I'm hoping this helps but that's what I'd be paying attention to definitely be familiar with the function menu and what's in here right now I have neutral density on so again with the flower I don't necessarily want to have neutral density on I don't want to slow down my shutter I want to keep it higher so I can freeze the flower and not have to worry about being super still so be aware of all of these different things I got it in vivid color space you can change your autofocus right now I got the skin soft the blow I have stabilization the steady shot active or on and it seems to work pretty well and then from there I have product showcase off ISO low at 125 exposure compensation zeroed out and then I have the focus point set to where I was showing you down here in the bottom but pay attention to all these little guys and get to know this menu within the function button and also you know the menu is going to be a whole different set uh, you know options there's so much here but we can maybe do another tutorial on that later but again monitor you can set the brightness to sunny weather but be forewarned if you do have it set to this there's a huge chance you're going to overheat and the internal temp's going to get too high and it's going to really shut things down but again there's times where you really can't even compose or see if it's really bright sunny conditions like it is lately here or in hawaii that you're going to want to use this and you won't be able to so i'm hoping sony addresses the overheating things somehow so again guys hope this helps aloha all right so that's a wrap guys essentially so you're aware too after i did my little macro tutorial of the little flower and i'm shooting this video i went and set the focus mode back from flexible point to wide i turned the neutral density filter on so my shutter speeds at the 60th of a second right now iso still is at 125 the skin softening is on slow i believe product showcase is off but again you need to pay attention to all of those things when you continue shooting again still figuring out this camera but so far I think shooting in the one camera mode right below HFR right now I'm in manual mode and controlling everything so again a 60th of a second with a neutral density filter on and seems pretty good we'll see what happens but I'm hoping this helped so if you can hit the subscribe button, it will help out a lot trying to break a thousand subscribers sooner than later. And I appreciate the energy and people that have been tuning in. And I'm hoping this helps some people out getting better macro shots with your ZV-1 and your RX-100 series cameras and your point and shoot. So get out, explore, look up close and see all the little details in the macro world because it really is cool. There's a lot of cool macroscapes that are out there waiting to be had from caterpillars to butterflies to insects to all kinds of stuff. So that's it, guys. Happy shooting. Aloha. Bye.